Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about what happens when a store buys out a card. A lot of you have been asking, oh, are you just buying out cards to spike its price? And the answer is no, I don't have the buying power to do it. You would need to be a store. So this is a live example of a store that pretty much speculated on one card. I'm not going to tell you what the card is until the very end. And I want you to guess what card it is so you know it's $279 for a near mint version of it. And this store has 1,678 copies. Let me repeat that again. 1,678 copies. They have just in this one card, let's assume it's $3 a copy, almost $5,000 in one card. And let me tell you this, it is a commander card and it is a common but it's not really a common since it's a commander card. It's only common the fact that it's in a lot of those decks. Now, when people influence the market and when they buy out, you have to, for a modern printed card, which is not on the reserve list, which is not you know, old, this is the number that you need. You need 2,000 copies to really affect the market in any noticeable way. So individual buyer or even a group of buyers of 50 buyers or 100 buyers is not going to affect the market in a noticeable way. But if you had a few stores, uh, you see the Game Academy has 171 of them. If you have a few stores with a few thousand of them and are willing to put down $5,000 in this investment, then that's how the card gets to 275 instead of being at 99 cents where honestly, the card is only worth 99 cents, in my opinion. But, so have you guys guessed what the card is? The, the simple fact of the matter is a store has way more buying power than any single individual does. And when they buy, they buy like crazy. They just buy out every single person. When Star City Games bought out every single fetch land, that was every single fetch land below $15. And fetch lands were only like $7 at the time. And then they raised the price to $25. And then guess what the new price was? $25. Because any, if a Misty Rainforest was under $25, Star City Games would just buy it. So this is a card. It costs two. You have no maximum hand size. That's pretty good. And you add one colorless to your mana pool. It is from a commander deck, commander series, and it is a common. But when a store puts down $5,000 on a common, I know it's not really a common, let's just assume it's a common, that is going to influence the price of the product. Uh, they will be able to set whatever the lowest price of the product is because they will continue to buy. If someone puts it at a dollar, this store will probably buy for a dollar and then just put it in this inventory and sell it for two seventy five, dollars always having the lowest price possible. And now you can copy and paste this to other more valuable cards like Fetchlands. Unfortunately, I didn't make a video about the Star City Games buying the Xander card Fetchlands. That was a very intriguing model because they were only $5, $6, $7, at the most $10 at the time. And what they did was overnight, they doubled the price. So when you talk about speculation, you talk about MTG Finance, you talk about who's actually the big players, it's not individual buyers. That's the biggest misconception people have is you cannot individually influence a market. You, you just cannot, unless you're buying something on a reserve list, unless you're buying something that's very limited. But in the modern scenario, you would need 2,000 copies of it. You would need $5,000 in a commander product. Now imagine if you wanted to move the price on a Sahili Raw, right? You can't fake that demand unless it's being faked by store. If a store wanted to move Sahili Raw from $5 to $25, they would still have to buy a ton of, a ton of copies. And then the problem would be more copies would enter the market. Um, this is the truth about MTG Finance. I don't have any influence over it. People telling you what to buy does not have any influence over it. Only large stores do because you need a few thousand copies of a card before it can actually start moving. And that is especially true of standard and even more true of modern with all the reprints and well, very true of modern reprints, but even the modern cards themselves, 
a lot of times when a card goes up in price, it's because of actual demand. When people hype up a card, in my opinion, that is a Reddit or it's like group mentality. It's a, oh my goodness, there's no copies left. I better buy this last copy. And then, more, and then another last copy pops up. In my opinion, an individual buyer with less than a thousand copies cannot influence the market for a standard or a commander or for a recent product just given how much a product is out there. Even a thousand, it's probably less than 0.001% of the total amount of that card in circulation. So anyway, leave me a comment below if you found this video helpful or if you have any questions. Uh, this is actually a viewer question on Facebook that someone asked me about is, am I artificially jumping the price of a product? And the answer is I cannot. But these stores actually can. Anyway, bye guys.